In this video we're going to connect to VATSIM so you can see the the proper protocol to connect. You have your Euroscope open, click on connect. The very first time that you get to use your your Euroscope, this these fields want will be blank. They are populated now because I have already logged uh, into the network and then once you do it the first time then it saves the information and the next time you log in you won't have to to include them. So the first thing that you select is the call sign. This is the position that you're going to be manning and as you can see all that has been preloaded into the files, into the settings. So you just look for the one you're going to be using. Again in, in principle the, w the right way to do this is that if you haven't checked through any other uh, method who is online you need to log in as a subserver so that's the very last option you scroll down you log in as subserver you type in your credentials this as you can see is automatically selected you're an observer so the facility is observer then the rating you need to select your rating in my case I am S2 and the server depending on where you are should you need to select the server that is closer closest to you connect to VATSIM that needs to be checked this then you have three fields of information those are text strings that you can you can use to include different different uh, information some controllers are here that if they want to receive feedback so they type in their email address the range it has been automatically retrieved it is already linked within the settings of, of the files themselves as soon as you select the position it will automatically set the range according to VATSIM regulations so this is something that you shouldn't you shouldn't move or change proxy connections this is useful when if you have two monitors and you would like to run simultaneously uh, Euroscope on two screens so you need to make sure that the, the proxy server is, is is running as it is right now simulation server this is because Euroscope has a simulation tool it can act as a, a, as a simulating uh, platform for training purposes login and playback that's a uh, it keeps a log of all your action. It it asks you or it lets you know where it is it's saving that file, which is it's a text file. You can change that as required. So in this case, since I'm logging in as, as an observer, I I don't really need all this information. I'm logging in as an observer because I want to see if anyone is online or not. So once I've done all that, I just click connect. Connects and the first thing it does is that it opens up automatically the voice, the, the, the comms. So that way you can you can decide which frequency you're going to be monitoring. I'm going to close it momentarily because that is not the intention. But as you can see, now that I logged in, it, it's giving me a couple of pieces of information. You noticed that this list on the top right of the screen already populated with some information. Right there I know that Seattle Center is online, I know that there's a supervisor online, but I also know that there is no one else in Vancouver. So this is the, s the usefulness of this. Right there you know if there is someone else or not. So in principle if there's no one, so you can log out and then log back in using the corresponding call sign and logging into the position that you have been authorized to control. It also shows you if you see on the left, on the bottom left, the meters list ha has been populated. I'm going to drag it here so we can see it. And it has been populated with, you see all the all the airports and all the uh, yeah all the airports that are included within within the area that you're going to be controlling. or the middle least. So that's pretty much what you do. If 
say uh, Vancouver Center is online, so what I usually do is that, and that's one thing I want to show you, if, if you go to the ATC list and then you double click on, on one of them, it will select it here as you can see. What it did is that it selected that controller, it's opening up uh, a private chat in between you and that controller and it's giving you the possibility to send whatever text. So you just type in and hit enter. And at the same time, as you can see, it gives you further information here on the right-hand side, lets you know what's their frequency, what's the name of that controller, and even which uh, sector file they're using. In this case, it's Seattle Sender. I, I don't need to, to talk to Seattle. If you want to get rid of that, you click Escape. And if you want to get rid of this private chat, you double-click on it and it gets rid of it. And now that there is no one there, I can disconnect. So I'm disconnected now. Now important is you need to log off and you need to allow at least 30 seconds before connecting again. So I just disconnected. It's been I don't know, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, and I am going to log in as Vancouver Approach. So I selected, as you can see, it already populated this, the facility is Approach Departure, my rating, it, it, it remains the same. It automatically adjusted the range for that position to 100 nautical miles. Again, this is linked to VATSIN regulations, so don't don't change this. But now, I, I can do that, and after you've learned how to work through this uh, dialog boxes, you can log off, select the call sign that you, the position you're going to be manning, and, and log back in, and you can click connect within 10 seconds. Don't do it. You need to wait at least 30 seconds. Because if you do it in less than 30 seconds, it will connect you to the network, and you won't have any issues. It will work. But, it will keep the previous connection. You know, in a way it waits 30 seconds before getting rid of, of the connection that was established when you connected f uh, first. So if you don't wait 30 seconds, you reconnect, you're gonna get a supervisor texting you saying how come you're logged in twice, once as an observer and in this case as approach and, and you're gonna wonder what's going on and that's the reason why. So wait 30 seconds, 35 seconds best and now you're ready to go back. So it's been more than 30 seconds since I've been explaining all that, so it's I it should be good. I have changed everything and then I just connect. It will ask you for this. It didn't do it when, when we logged in as an observer because we were just observers. It will always ask you, it's letting you know, well, you're, you didn't put information regarding when you're planning to log off it is just want to go, it wants to confirm if that's what you want to do yes i don't i don't want to indicate when when i'm going to be logging off but remember that per bar vaccine regulations if you're logging in you need to stay online for at least 45 minutes if you won't be able to stay online for 45 minutes don't log in or log in as an observer and just wa watch the action so in this case i want to leave that empty and i say yes i want to continue with that empty And now, as you can see, the logo changed. It's showing, it's letting you know that it's connected to VATSIM. And here we are. We're now, you wait a couple of seconds, and as you can see, what it did now is that it's showing you the area you're controlling. So now that changed. You can see the, the green background indicates the area outside of your airspace. The black background indicates the area you are controlling. The boundary of the area remains green if there is no one controlling that area right beside you. As in this case, this is this is Vancouver Center's area, and as as we as we verified previously, Vancouver Center is offline. That's why it's showing it in such a way. But as you can see down here, that border it's actually it has a, a cyan color. So that is letting me know that there is a controller down here. 
and uh, therefore this is a border where which will require a handoff and that needs to be coordinated accordingly and the nice thing about this is that as you can see for Bellingham this is Bellingham Airport when Seattle Center is online as it is right now Seattle is in charge of uh, assuming the towers uh, responsibilities for Bellingham and when the aircraft depart from there they are airborne then we get the handoff and we take care of them same with landing aircraft when they are going through our airspace we are controlling them if they're planning if they're going to be landing in Bellingham and Seattle Center is online then we need to do the handoff so this is the nice thing about this uh, these borders let you know and there's a, a another nice feature about handoffs as well which uh, we will be going through at a later date that's how you connect to VATSIM and uh, on the next video we will be setting up the audio you need to set up your audio preferably before you connect to VATSIM but uh, we will go through that so you can rest assured that your comms and your audio is working properly now I'm just going to disconnect again this is just a test I should have stayed connected for 45 minutes but the intention was not to provide ATC today the intention is to assist our fellow ATC interested in using Euroscope on, on learning the basics of it it's connected and we're gonna move on to the next video thanks for watching